So the family of an Ontario woman is suing after she says she suffered severe burns from a Tim Hortons tea. The lawsuit argues Tim Hortons gave the woman the tea at a, quote, scalding temperature in a defective cup that, quote, collapsed in on itself. The defendants, the company responsible for supplying materials and upkeep standards at Tim Hortons, deny the allegations. Rajiv Hate is a personal injury lawyer with Kotak Lawyers in Toronto. Good morning, Rajiv. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for being with us to help us sort of understand this case, but also there have been similar cases um, like this. So someone soon because of injuries from spilled drinks or collapsed cups at a fast food, food restaurant. How often do these kind of lawsuits come up? Uh, quite honestly, we see them very commonly. Uh, you know, you can imagine how many people are, are purchasing hot beverages from establishments like, you know, whether it's Tim Hortons, McDonald's, et cetera, uh, on a daily basis. And so you do see cases like that come up quite often because, uh, unfortunately, incidences like this do occur. Mm. And so the family in this case um, says um, that the cup collapsed. That's how this uh, woman was injured. She um alleges in a lawsuit that uh, she still has scars on her legs, that the hot beverage fell on her stomach and her legs, um, and the cup collapsed um, and the tea went all over the place. How do you prove that legally? Yeah, that's that's a great question, and, and quite frankly, uh, I think a case like this is going to definitely require the discovery process because a number of factors are going to have to come into account. First of all, what kind of cup was used, right? Was it the correct packaging and material that should be used for a beverage that's being served of that nature? Another thing you'll likely have to look into is the temperature of the beverage, right? Was it served at an appropriate temperature for what that beverage should be served at? Uh, there are standards that, that, that are around, but on top of it, you can compare it to the average temperature of the similar beverage beverage at other locations. Uh, you know, I think it, a case like this may require expert evidence to determine what would cause a cup of that material to collapse, mm. you know, in and of itself, as it's described, uh, where that's where an expert could look at this and say, okay, if it's a certain uh, temperature, that's the only way it could collapse of that nature. Uh, I think it would be very uh, helpful and, and, and important if, if the plaintiff is able to, to preserve the cup. Uh, you know, hopefully they were able to keep that because that will help to, to show what what the state of the cup is, you know, after this incident occurred. Uh, ultimately, it is the plaintiff's burden to prove the case. So, uh, you know, it, it's going to require likely uh, the discovery process to find all of this out. And, and again, it may require expert uh, testimony to to comment on this. Right, because an expert um, would be able to say, look, the shape of this cup or the marks on it would suggest or would say that the te- the beverage in the cup was at this temperature. Uh, exactly. You know, they could sort of work backwards and say, in order for this to occur to this cup, the temperature would have to be of this nature. Like, it would not have happened but for the temperature being above a certain degree of, of Fahrenheit or Celsius, whatever it may be. So I, I think that's where an expert could come in. Now, you could also look at it from the side of her injuries. How severe are her injuries? You may be able to get an expert to comment on the fact that injuries sustained of that nature, uh, again, would not have occurred if the beverage was not a certain degree. Right? Mm-hmm. And that may require a combination of, of medical experts or engineers. Again, that's where you'll have to sort of look into what would be the appropriate expert to comment on on something like this. Mm-hmm. And so th- the woman in this case, the plaintiff in this case, said that the, cu- the cup of tea felt unusually hot when it was given to her. So this is based on negligence, which is not a quantitative measure. It's a, it's a qualitative word. So in the, the legal realm, is it uh, how hard is it to sort of prove negligence? Uh, I mean, I do that all the time. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, it's it's a situation where, you know, you, you've got to prove that there there's a duty of care, that duty of care was breached and that it resulted in some damages to the plaintiff, right? So, um, you know, in terms of, of how hard it is to prove, I always say it's a very fact-specific inquiry, right? It really is going to determine on a number of factors, again, including what I've already described. But also, you know, you're also going to look into, is there any potentially contributory negligence on the plaintiff? Is there anything that she did? that either caused or contributed to the spill, or could she have done anything to have avoided the spill occurring, Mm. right? That's always a factor that's looked into. As we started off our conversation, we said, look, these kinds of cases come up. Um, We we often talk about them in the media as well. Do you have any sense of how successful these kinds of cases generally are in, in a court of law? 
You know, again, I, I always say it's very sp- fact specific because every case is different, right? Whether or not um, someone has has potentially caused the injury to themselves uh, compared to if there was a defect really depends on the facts. You know, I've handled a lot of cases of this nature, and I've been very successful at at, at reaching resolutions of those claims. So um, I, I definitely would not shy away from a case like this, and I see them quite often. You know, but again, I, you know, I'll give you an example: a case that I had where it was a, a, a drive-through. Coffee spilled, hot coffee spilled on on uh, my client's lap. Suffered very severe burns to very private areas, uh, and and in that case, we ended up getting the uh, surveillance of the uh, or rather the video footage of the drive-through, and we were able to see how the spill occurred. And in that case, it was handed to him just outside of the window as he brought it into his car. It hit the top of the roof and then spilled in. And so the mm. defense is arguing that you know in that case he is the author of his own misfortune. He's the one who didn't bring it into his car properly. Now. I argued, of course, first of all, it should be handed to him at a proper level. Second of all, the lid shouldn't have fallen off regardless. Just for tapping a, the, the, the window, it shouldn't just fall off. It wasn't on properly. And so, again, we were able to reach a resolution of the case, but all of these factors come, come into play. Rajiv, appreciate you uh, helping us kind of walk through what might happen in this case and sharing your in, information about how these things play out in different situations. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure speaking with you. Rajiv Hate is a personal injury lawyer with Kotak Lawyers in Toronto.